Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing to support them with a few different things. So healing for the third eye, the crown chakra, exploring if there's any kind of entity attachments, helping to take a look, clear those out, and discuss recommendations, advice, if there's still work to do, how they can do some continuation. I'm gonna read the goals here in just a moment. I wanna really emphasize a big thank you to the client. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's wonderful to meet you. It's wonderful to get to support you with these goals. Always interesting to see if there's any kind of entity attachments. It's always fun to do healing for the third eye crown chakra. And I guarantee anyone listening in, there's going to be support for you as well. So when I heal the client, it's healing for the client. It heals me, it heals you. We all benefit from this exchange. So we're gonna learn something, we're gonna heal today. And thank you again to the client very much. Thank you for this opportunity. So I'm gonna read your goals. We'll get started here. You say, I would like clearing for my third eye and crown chakra. Can you check for energy parasites, archons, negative entities? I also want any negative influence inside or outside myself to be seen and cleared. I'm okay with work I have to do on my end, but I really want to clean up my energy field and work with my energy, not the influence of anything beyond myself. Any energy protection that you see fit for myself, my home, my family, I welcome it too. Thank you so much, Abby. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just a moment here. I, got <laughs> I was like, okay, we've got third eye and crown. You got it. Energy parasites, archons, negative entities. Okay. Any negative influence inside, outside. You want to work with your own energy. So anything that's in influencing you to be outside of alignment with your true vibration, that's what you're going for. Okay. And energy protection. Yeah. Okay. For yourself, your home, your family. Okay. All right. This is going to be such an interesting session. All right. I like all your goals. Let me relax here. <sighs> okay. Okay, so, so I'm getting an alignment here with how we want to start this process. So a third eye crown chakra healing, but also I want to look for any kind of energy attachments. So those might not be necessarily in your third eye and crown. They could be anywhere. Uh, so an open mind to that. So I'm just kind of getting my footwork here on how I want to proceed. And that way we can achieve your goals, okay? The first inspiration that comes to me, I'm actually just going to see you head to toe, above, below, within, and around, in all sacred directions. I'm actually going to be surrounding you in all sacred directions. That's not just outside, above, below. It's inside as well. I'm surrounding you in this beautiful bluish white fire. Okay. I'm going to start here. It's interesting when you take like a, a blue flame torch and you take it into any dark energy space that's covered in like a black goo, it just dissolves it. And I, I really attribute this to like an Archangel Michael phenomenon, almost like his energy in a fire. And to let that fire, like a Reiki fire, do this amazing purification process. So whether we see it or we didn't exactly consciously see it, that blue fire, there's some white, silvery blue fire. It's all sort of interconnected. I'm just surrounding you in all sacred directions with this powerful energy, okay? Within, around, above, below, all sacred directions. Really emphasizing that. And so we can inhale and exhale this beautiful energy. It's almost like giving you permission to lean a bit on some help. So sometimes we just don't have the energy to be the energy we need to be bright enough or the blue flame enough or the Archangel Michael enough to stay energetically in alignment, you know? 
So sometimes we need a little bit of help to kind of fill in any blanks, any gaps. We're just not able to achieve it because of stress or responsibility or we worry or whatever, okay? So I'm, I'm seeing you as a, like a dry sponge concept and that the blue flame is like the water. You're just soaking it in, okay? And I'm really allowing myself to see that you're soaking it into your face, soaking into your third eye, soaking into your crown chakra. And also just soaking it in here in your throat and not just the front, the back, okay? So your, your crown chakra is not just the front. It's above, below, within, around. It's all sacred direction. And so let's just call it that. So your crown chakra is soaking in this blue firelight, okay? In all sacred directions, your third eye is in all sacred directions, soaking it in. And your throat chakra is soaking it in in all sacred directions. Your heart chakra is soaking in in all sacred directions. Your emotional gut, solar plexus, soaking it in in all sacred directions. Your sacral chakra soaking in this blue firelight, all sacred directions. Your root chakra soaking in the firelight in all sacred directions. <sighs> So I'm going to choose to see, fearlessly so, that let's say there are some energy attachments. They're going to be soaking in the blue firelight, okay, in all sacred directions. And that's going to purify them within, around, etc. And they're going to be grateful for that or they're going to flee, okay? Because sometimes our pain, we just want help. And sometimes we don't know how to put it there, so we put it there for each other. We help each other in this way. Sometimes we want it, sometimes we don't want it. So anything that's attracted to you, and it's attracted to you because of some kind of energy you're expressing, and it's sort of feeding off of that and influencing you in a negative way, there's going to be blue firelight for that, okay? within and around and we're grateful for you we're grateful for your presence we're grateful to be working on this ourselves we want to share the energy we're grateful thank you i'm ready to get alignment with my true vibration i want to know what my song is i want to know my soul i want to know who i am and I appreciate getting to learn with others, interdimensional beings that I would consciously like or not like. <laughs> I want to know who I am. I want to know who I am. And I welcome in the blue firelight to really support me in that process. Archangel Michael, we welcome your help here to support us in this process. I feel really strongly that I need to begin here. And we need to have this beginning here. Really soak up this energy first. I'm still working on, I really wanna feel it go through your spine, through your lungs, like reach your heart from the back forward, okay? I really like to feel that energy on the back side, the back of the head, the back of the neck forward, the back, like upper, mid, lower back forward hips okay why not the legs you know the butt cheeks like let's move it forward okay the knees like let's bring this energy let's the calves the ankles the feet like let's bring it forward because we forget that we have a behind part of us too it's much easier to kind of soak it in on the front but we gotta soak it in on the back all right i'm gonna let that continue to do its thing so that's doing its thing over there, soaking up the good vibes, okay? These good, beautiful, bluish, whitish, silvery firelight, Archangel Michael energy here to support you, really positive energy to help you in these goals, okay? So, so we're doing that. I'm just curious, show me... Are there some negative entities, some archons, some energy parasites? Show me. Let's take a look at these and let's clear these out and we'll go deeper into your third eye and crown, okay? Okay, I'm kind of taken into a weird interdimensional space. I feel like I'm a floating body. I want to say it's underwater, but it doesn't necessarily represent underwater. 
It's like if outer space was the ocean at the same time without water in it. <laughs> That's probably the best uh, parallel I can make here. But it is black with the uh, white stars. And I'm just sort of suspended out here. I also feel like I'm inside of a cave with this energy in it. And uh, I'm just sort of suspended. I can't really go in any particular direction. I'm waiting. What's weird is I start to see the fabric of what looks like outer space move. It's huge, okay? It looks like a mop head. But now imagine this mop head is like an actual, I don't know, octopus-like thing and it's cosmic sized. It's so huge you didn't even know that it was what you thought was the universe was actually a living being. It freaks you out a bit. And once it moves, the gravity changes. So now, bam, my feet are on the ground. I'm in a cave-like space, but there's a huge opening and I can look out of this opening and I see a massive, enormous, huge mop head looking octopus thing. And it's actually a very dark bluish purple color. I'm a bit mortified and wondering what the heck, <laughs> like, okay, what are you, why are you here? What, what, what do I know about you? What do you know about me? Like, there's this like instantaneous, like, what does this mean? <laughs> so let's see. It was sleeping. And now it is awake. And it's in a way thinking and I feel there's a connection between the third eye and the heart about this. I don't feel necessarily threat or danger. But this needed to be kind of unearthed, you know. Something feels like sorrow. I'm starting to understand what this represents. I see a reflection of you. And you're, you're crying. And I see you but I also see your reflection in a mirror and both reflections are looking down and they're holding on to something and it's kind of like a stuffed animal but it, it represents a comfort object like a child would have to fall asleep at night this comfort object actually looks like a ballerina and it's a stuffed animal ballerina you represent a mature adult and also a child the tears fall onto this comfort object ballerina and it soaks up the tears. I see this massive octopus jellyfish thing has a sentimental heart in a way. Is it here to comfort you or is it attracted to your need to be comforted? Is it helping you to let go of holding on to something you need to let go of? It doesn't strike me as a, the worst kind of being you could ever come across, but what I will say is its influential energy is going to make it hard for you to let go of something you need to let go of, and it feels like it's associated with a heartbreak, and it impacted your innocence. It impacted the beauty of your youth, so to speak. What makes a child so adorable? What makes you adorable, you know, as a person? as a wonderful person, you know? So it's starting to look grosser, like this huge octopusy looking thing. Like, what do I call it? <laughs> Big mop thing. It saddens me a bit because it's starting to look like nasty old spaghetti noodles that fell on the floor and got hairy and dirty and gross. And it starts to look like dirty hair Oh, shoot. Oh, man, this is sad. This is, this, this is saddening. No wonder this, uh, this is hard to look at. This is a mind piercing, third eye piercing, because we have to see that we have to, to look into our sadness, you know? Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely it, um, affects your mind, okay? <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Something's going to have to, to literally shatter. I see a perfect slushy that nobody wanted. And it just sat there and then melted. 
It was like something so good and useful and wonderful and it just went to waste. It could be a way a way that you felt like you 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 feel like you had something good to offer and it just it just never got to offer it, let's say. You were never fully embraced. Yeah, that's where this thing comes in, okay? Because there's a there's a multi connect there's like connecting the dots of more than just the slushy. What is it that you're holding on to? Is it a ballerina stuffed animal? Is it something it's the tears are falling upon it, soaking up the tears? This is all very sentimental, emotional, heartfelt, mind is involved in this too. Not in an egotistical way. The mind is looking, mind is reflecting, mind is part of the feelings of this, the heartbreak of this. And this energy is attracted to this. This energy is lingering here and holding you in a state of lingering here too. Not because it is evil or deceptive or manipulative. It just is part of this process. It's just part of it and it's causing you to stay in it, okay? I snap my fingers really loud right by your right ear and op to open your eyes almost to break the spell, okay? And you will have to say goodbye to this, this creature. And believe it or not, this creature has been a friend to you through great hardship. But this friend, in a way, reminds you of and then holds you in a place of holding on to hardship. Associated with heartbreak, associated with the loss of innocence, something that made you feel like a longing to be comforted, to be able to comfort yourself, to cry properly, to, to navigate some kind of deep sadness. And there's no way really to navigate it, so it's just linger in it. But that's not correcting, it's not letting go of it, it's not moving on, it's not maturing or growing up out of it. It's just staying in that place. So when I break this spell, it feels extremely cold and cruel of me to do so. I just give you props because this is not easy. This is hard to do. When you wake up, you are in a place of kind of barrenness and it represents lots of people that died. And they they died and their bodies kind of melded together. It's just like sort of um, ash and dirt and bodies, ash, dirt, bodies, ash, dirt, bodies. It's just a compilation of layers of death People that were fighting to live, then died. People fighting to live again, then died. People fighting to live, died. Buried, upon buried, upon buried, upon buried, upon buried, okay? You don't like waking up here because there's so much loss, there's so much death that cannot be resurrected. These could be all parts of you that were fighting to live, died in the process, so we resurrect them. We just send them back to God. So we feel like we're one soul, we live, we die, go to heaven, that we're actually like a collective of many people in here. And you know when it, you have to, all, it takes all your might and all that you are to get through a hard time. But a hard time isn't just one day. It's like a whole year that then has another layer upon another layer of another year and then another year and then how that freaking makes you feel. And then all these years, upon all these years, upon all these years of trying and trying and trying and trying to keep your head above water, to believe, to be optimistic, to breathe, to be helpful, to be a virtue. Then you find yourself breaking down, but you have to keep going, you know? And so it's kind of like those parts, sometimes we lose parts of my, ourself in the process and we start to feel like we're dying, okay? And so when we go through hard times, we will actually feel like we're dying and parts of ourself are dying, literally. So if we can get to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, really it's a moment in time where we realize we're not dying anymore. And we don't need to hold on to the comfort object. And we can be grateful for our friend, the strange octopus thing. Thank you for being with me through this. You are part of the echoing memory that keeps me holding on to what was and I need to let it go. Because it's over now. And I'm going to let the, the dead resurrect into the light so that I can breathe again. So I'm going to let the parts of myself go to God is, is basically what it's like. 
Oh man, this ever feels a lot better. It feels like a lot of weight lifted off your heart, but I don't even feel like we're there yet. I see a strange pterodactyl. It has a high-pitched sound as it comes down and sort of grips you with its claw hands. I don't know, his feet? <laughs> yeah. And it just boop, and it picks you up by the shoulders and then hoists you up in the air and it's just like flying you away. I don't know what it means, but... We give it a proper burial here to all those warriors of yourself that lived and died and were kind of buried and weren't properly brought back to God. And so we're doing like a little ceremony of love here. We bring in Archangel Michael, we bring in the blue fire and help to purify and heal. And we're thankful for you, big octopus creature. Thank you for caring. Thank you for your presence. We give you light and love as well. Man, I will tell you what, that is hard stuff. We, I know it's easy to just talk through it and all that, but energetically, this is a big thing. This is a big thing. <sighs> so it seems like the pterodactyl is taking you as like a spirit animal, literally. A spirit animal taking you to new experiences. You got to trust in this one, okay? But you don't know where it's taking you. You don't know what the future holds. It's hard to see clearly. It, you know, just, just simply don't know. It's, it's kind of dropping you in the white clouds and you're just falling, falling, falling. But you got to trust in this. You're actually not falling to your death. You've got to trust in this. You're falling into the new experience and you're going to land on your feet. Unless you're terrified, then you can flail and fall on your head if you want to, but you don't have to. You got to trust and believe in yourself that you can land on your feet in new experiences and you're going to be solid about it. You need to hear that. Have some confidence because doubt, doubt will appear here in your third eye. Doubt will appear. You don't need doubt. Okay. You have confidence. The pterodactyl has confidence in you too. Knows where you're, you're going next and is guiding you there and is actually releasing you into the experience and you're dropping like a bomb into the experience, but you're going to land on your feet and you're going to do it seamlessly like gold medal Olympian, okay? Something feels uh, like a teeter-totter. Is it this side? Is it that side? Is it this? It just, it's not balanced. It's not in the center of things. It's either this way or it is that way and doesn't feel right. So we're kind of in a new scene, by the way, I needed to tell you about the pterodactyl releasing you, you fall, you're going to land on your feet. No, don't work with doubt. Okay. You don't need to work with doubt. All right. So this new scene is like a teeter totter and this side, that side, it's just, why can't it just be like whole in and of itself? Why does it have to be one side or the other side? Because you are this side and then that side. You are the teeter-totter. You are like that. We need to get more feedback. What does that mean exactly? You're this way and then you're the right side, the left side, this way, that way. Like, what does that mean? If we were to give it more clarity. Don't teeter-totter. I mean, it's a really, like, I feel that it's obvious. Stop teeter-tottering. You know the answer. It's kind of like, um, should I do this? Should I do that? Yes, no, which one do I do? You know the answer. So make it clear. Then you don't have a teeter-totter. You know the answer. You know what the answer is, okay? Don't, no doubt. Believe in yourself, you're gold medal Olympian, you land on your feet, you know what the answer is. You need to hear this. You need to know about this. No wonder. Like, let's just clear out any other influence. And what is the influence? Could be doubt. But there's also this heavy thing. That's some death phase going on in there. Some needing to let go of something emotional you're holding on to the loss of some kind of essence of your innocence mending of your heart okay pterodactyl spirit seems to be 
the spirit animal for you. <laughs> I don't know why it's still watching. It's watching over you, very motherly, very protective, like you're her pterodactyl baby. <laughs> Okay, I want to go into your third eye and let's just take a look and see what it looks like, okay? Some, okay, this is horrifying. <laughs> Sorry, but this is what it looks like. It looks like uh, there's a, a drill and it's kind of like a gun, but it goes here and it's like, it's full volume and it's going really fast and it's drilling a hole into your head. And there seems to be some kind of weird contraption. I, I hear the sound of like pieces, hammering, drilling. We're building something here. And it has to do with drilling into your third eye. But it seems to be connected to your crown chakra, like some kind of weird contraption. <laughs> okay, let's figure out what is this. <laughs> what is this? It has to do with building for sure, but... It, it, it's being done to you, though, and you are not building materials, so the drilling can't be happening to you. Uh, we need to... What is this? It needs to be maybe an external project that isn't affecting you. Let me continue to look at it. Okay, Pterodactyl Mother is uh, watching again. Ask your... You know, what's your opinion here? You, you seem to be a helpful kind of spirit animal type rep representation. What's your recommendation here with this third eye? And the crown chakra is involved, but really the third eye. She says, uh, remove the drill and remove the, the building pieces. This seems like you're making a kind of metallic hat or something. Once I do that, you're exposed and you don't know if you can hold your mind together, your thoughts together. Your, your head gets really soggy and it kind of pops and it, <clears throat> it just overflows with liquid. It's really weird. <sighs> she says, just be patient and let this flow out. <sighs> and you feel like you've lost so much. You've lost so much. You've lost so much. You've lost so much. It looks like blueberry juice. It's like really thick blueberry juice and it exposes your brain to the elements. And you need to keep your brain safe. But she says, no, your brain needs fresh air. Are you getting fresh air? You need to give yourself fresh air. Give your brain fresh air. And you know what she means by this. It's, uh, I see you riding a bicycle. You're just riding a bicycle. I just, you're just literally just riding a bicycle. You're still just riding a bicycle. It's just, there's something symbolic here about this. You're going somewhere and you're going nowhere. But what are you doing? You're riding a bicycle. And what are you doing? You are giving yourself fresh air. You're helping your brain breathe. Your brain needs to breathe. And I, as a bicycler, I see you literally are not going really anywhere. You're just riding a bike. It's not like oh, I'm riding my bike to the grocery store, riding my bike to the library, riding my bike somewhere. No, just riding my bike just to ride a bike. And I'll be honest, uh, it's a blue bike. It feels really good. It feels like you could give yourself time to just ride a bike. It feels really good. It, it seems to have a connection with your youth in a way. I feel, uh, I, I hear the sound of riding a bike over to a friend's house and then tossing the bike on the lawn or something and running in and knocking on the door to see if your friend's there. It's like that kind of feel to it. Like the way that we used to, to ride bikes everywhere, across town, just ride our bike to get from place to place. It's really healthy for that, that youthful part of yourself. It's healthy with the imagery of fresh air and oxygen. Time for you to go somewhere and nowhere, you're just riding a bike. It's actually really invigorating here for the brain and the mind and your third eye, it's really healthy. 
And then the pterodactyl says, okay, drill the hole and build something or stop doing that. Let this all relax and flood out. Expose your mind to the fresh air and ride a bike. Which one? Which one makes sense? If she shows me a child having to do a really hard test and it's like, build this contraption that's hurting, you're straining your head for all the right reasons that you convinced yourself of, or ride a bike. Uh, is this a trick question? No. Uh, ride a bike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, we're not teeter-tottering. We know the answer here. Ride a bike. <laughs> it's actually really nice because it's so simple. It doesn't require anything, any special instructions, any special tasks, any special way to eat or meditate or do anything or do yoga. It's just ride a bike. And whether that is achievable in your world or I can at least achieve it for you in the energy world, it is helping. Okay. I feel like there's so much more depth to this third eye of yours, but we're going to do this for your third eye. Let's go to your crown chakra. Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of like pop, pop has bubbles and so it's fizzy, but it's kind of dust, like a s glittery sawdust. So the sense of dryness, but it does sparkle and it is kind of cool looking, but it's not, it, it could be very, uh, effervescent and, uh, fun. Like, uh, I don't know, <sighs> maybe, maybe, um. I, I just experienced myself kind of in a jungle, but it's safe from from everything jungly. <laughs> and here's the obvious path. And then it's full of this awesome mist. And I'm on my way to this sort of secret waterfall in the secret pond space. Like I'm on my way and I'm like inhaling and exhaling this awesome mist. And I'm going into the water space and the waterfall and it's just pouring down on my head. And it's like, oh my God, invigorating, effervescent, invigorating water space. Okay. And so this is for your crown chakra. It's thirsty, all right? Like thirsty. So it's drinking up the upper essence of the water energy. Man, it's so thirsty. So, wow, we're really pouring it on in there. Feels good. Feels really good. You're <clears throat> telling me on the side that you feel kind of bad about that octopus thing. Ugh. I say, why do you feel bad about it? I say, that's why, that's why you're attached to it and it's attached to you. Because you would feel bad about it. It's taking you into the vibration that you can't let go of. You can't feel bad about it. You have to trust that it it's part of God's plan, you know? You're part of God's plan. You can connect to that thing forevermore and forevermore and stay in a more depressed state. Or you can trust that this was part of the plan and that the new plan is part of the plan is that I am strong enough and courageous enough to trust that I'm letting this go for all the right reasons and to let it truly go and not feel bad about that. And pterodactyl mother is nodding to this. <sighs> seems to be very helpful to have help in your life. It seems nice to have pterodactyl mother to, to take care of you in her own way, like a guiding light of her own kind, you know? Just kind of nice. I'm asking, okay, if we were to really take a look full circle here, we've accomplished some very interesting things. I know you emphasize wanting some tips or recommendations. There is always work to be done, you know? That's just a thing, like... You get to have someone say, remove my chakra blocks. And it's like, okay, your chakras are infinite spaces. So we'll remove what's at the surface. And then there's going to be something else that comes up to the surface. Because we're always going to be growing. We're not stuck in one place. And that's it. Like we're always going to be expanding and growing and facing new challenges and growing out of those to face new challenges. So, okay, so what... 
what what tips, what advice I'm asking if we were to come full circle here? Okay. It's really healthy the first step in all of this. You can rewatch this as often as you want, okay? This, this intro is really nice because it just allows you to really saturate in that energy. Love and support. Let the fire come in. See yourself as the dry sponge absorbing in this moisture. It's like fire. You're just absorbing it in. Head to toe, front, back, all sacred directions within, around, etc. Just really bringing it in, right? Really absorbing it in. And it gives you an edge when you have that because it gives you a little bit of something to lean on to. But it also is you. It's the strongest part of you that you're absorbing in here. Because you're wanting to transition into being your strongest self. We're always wanting that. And sometimes we need to, you know, lean a little bit until we find our own footing to lean back into our own shoes. I see Archangel Michael as a really loving presence here. Is helping you to stand on your own two feet. Is helping you to continue to navigate your heart and your mind. Seems like a combination. All the upper vessels for your crown chakra is really, really revitalizing. It's really the breath of the, the cosmic universe, the mind of God, the mind of your higher self, the outside the box thinking, the joy of creative thinking, right? Inhaling and exhaling that in the third eye so the third eye can evaluate it and look at it. But we want to do it with peace and with ease, love and support, which is there for you. Mending and healing the heart. Helping you to feel like you standing in your own shoes. <sighs> All right, so that's what I've got. It's a really fun session. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for sharing. For those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody.